What I can tell you is that the hours will never have been performed on stage before when we do it. I had um, brought the idea uh, of a new opera up with Renee Fleming, and she was actually very receptive. And then I, there was one project that I, I had an idea for. She said, you know, I'm not sure about that, but you know what would be great is uh, to do something that, um, that takes place in, in different time periods all at the same time, like the hours. The story of the hours, it's in three parts. It is the sort of simultaneous stories of a day in Virginia Woolf's life when she is beginning to write the novel Mrs. Dalloway, a day in the life of Mrs. Dalloway herself, although I have imagined her as living today in New York City. And um, a woman in suburban Los Angeles who is reading Mrs. Dalloway. This is the LA 1950s moment. So that's Laura Brown. And they come together. The story is so extraordinary. I mean, the fact that uh, Michael Cunningham took your work, Virginia Woolf's work, Mrs. Dalloway, and put it together into this story, which spans three different periods. I remember reading it when it very first came out and being sort of enthralled by the internal story, how it deep, how in depth it went. Because it's a universal story, mm -hmm. even though it's different time periods, there's a housewife, lesbian, writer, all these different characters. And all those different stories have a relationship, of course, to Virginia and to the book but they also have different relationships to, to death and to, to grief in different ways and also to lives unlived. One of the challenges um, for this project was um, because there are three separate stories to not make it feel like three short operas intertwined but to make it feel like it's one whole piece. So we worked really hard to try to make the voices um, distinct but also make it feel um, cohesive. I started thinking about what you could do in music that you can't do in a film or in a book. The kind of simultaneity is the kind of overlap that can happen between these, uh, these three different women living in these three different time periods that you could, you could establish the stories and then gradually begin to blur the lines. And, and all of that is possible on the operatic stage and through music, through harmony, through notation. So we have to find an equivalence of that with the staging, creating those different worlds, but you move really fast between them. I wrote Clarissa's part for Renee because I know her so well, I've worked with her so much, and she knows me, and so she's comfortable telling me every, <laughs> telling me every, every possible little nook and cranny that she would like, you know, can we, can we change this a little bit? And um, I'm very happy to do that. There's actually nothing like it, you know, to, to work so closely with one of the great performers in the world. Um, and, and for her to feel like the part fits her like a glove, you know, at a certain point. And it's, it's not maybe right away, but it takes, it takes some time. And so it's very gratifying um, to, to do that. I, I had a, a conversation via email with Michael Cunningham about this role here being his mother. She was a homemaker. She kept the house and raised the kids, a job for which she was enormously overqualified. There were women that really struggled, and we as a society don't always know that and don't pay attention to that. Because the character of Virginia Woolf feels very far from me. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, <laughs> putting on the costume and the wig, it's like starting to put on the character and you start to feel the weight and the, the heaviness, even from the style of the wig. It's kind of extraordinary how that opens a door mm -hmm. to parts of you that maybe you don't always have time to examine. The darker side, the side that feels more oppressed without a voice. These are, you know, people struggling with their mortality and, their, and whether or not to continue their lives when 
many aspects of their life, lives are, are untenable. I didn't want to bring those stories to life in a way that was detached or, or abstract. I wanted that to be very real, and I want the audience to empathize with the characters. The dream of this opera is that there will be moments where people will relate to this and relate with their own stories in different ways. And I think by highlighting it through the different personalities, the different periods, everybody that watches it is going to be able to find a part of themselves in the story. It's going to be such an exciting experience and to see how the audience responds to this piece. Um, I think it's a very different kind of piece than you've probably ever seen at the Met. I'm, I'm excited. Mm -hmm. I am too.